Hello, my friends. How are you? Welcome to a special edition of 30 Albums for 30 Years. I am your host, Jay Sweet. This is a world music edition. And today we're going to discover the music of Latin America. But what does that even mean? Latin America is a very broad term. It usually refers to the intercoastal region that stretches from the U.S. through the Mexican border to the southern tip of South America. That's about 659 million people. The term Latin America or Latin American originally referred to people in the Western Hemisphere where a romantic based language was prominently used. That includes descendants of Spanish or Portuguese speaking countries. So let's begin our journey by discussing tango music. Tango music and tango dancing mainly originated in the late 19th century in brothels, bars, and on the streets of Buenos Aires, Argentina. Tango became popularized by disenfranchised immigrants and unemployed citizens, often former soldiers. Early tango music was heavily influenced by European genres, such as Spanish, Italian, and French folk music, along with African rhythms and elements from local Argentinian folk music. As with American blues, the lyrics of tangos often explore themes of love, longing, heartbreak, betrayal, and the basic human struggles. The instrumentation of tango typically included bandoneons, which are a button box accordion, violin, piano, and double bass. In addition, the guitar, flute, and clarinet were sometimes used. Much of the appeal comes from a specific rhythm known as a habanero rhythm, which places accents on beats one, the end of beat two, beat three, and beat four of the basic 4-4 rhythm. One of the most influential tango artists was Carlos Gardel, an Argentinian singer, songwriter, and actor who is often referred to as the king of tango. Gardel was born in France in 1887, but moved to Argentina at around two years old. He first began performing at parties and recorded a Latin American hit in 1917 with the song Mi Noche Triste. He then toured internationally and continued making and selling hit records. He also began acting in several American and French made films. Considered a heartthrob, Gardel died at the height of his fame at only 44 years old. He was killed in a plane crash over Colombia in 1935. Por una cabeza, which means by a head, is one of Gardel's most famous songs. It features Gardel's vocal stylings. Now, as I mentioned, early tango music was heavily associated with prostitution, and the lyrics compare bidding on a prostitute to betting on horses. The narrator keeps getting outbid by a head for the prostitute's services, but he eventually becomes the highest bidder. The chorus translates to the following. Losing by a head, there was all there was, all that madness. In a kiss, her mouth wiped out all the sadness. It soothes the bitterness. The song is a fine example of early tango and is one of Carlos Gardel's most popular hits. One of the most important South American composers was Astor Piazzolla. In the 1950s, Piazzolla, who was a renowned Argentinian bandoneon player and composer introduced a revolutionary approach to tango known as Nuevo Tango, New Tango. Pio Zola spent much of his youth in New York City where he became inspired by American jazz and classical music. His talents came to the attention of Carlos Gardel and he was asked to tour with the legend at a young age, but thankfully his father would not allow it. Had he accepted the position, he would have likely died in the same plane crash as Gardel. In 1937, Piazzolla returned to Argentina 
and played in cabarets. In 1953, he studied with legendary piano instructor Nadia Boulanger, who helped him to develop his own sound by blending tango with jazz and European classical music. For quite some time, this new direction was dismissed by traditionalists and critics, but eventually he achieved critical acclaim by around the 1970s. Piazzolla, as I mentioned, is considered one of the most important South American composers of the 20th century. His blending of tango with jazz and classical music and other genres really pushed the boundaries of the genre and expanded its artistic possibilities. Liber Tango is one of Piazzolla's most beloved tunes. It was recorded in 1974, and the tune represents Piazzolla's break from classical tango into tango nuevo. Take notice of how the composer blends traditional tango with more contemporary styles, yet the underlying habanero rhythm remains. Liber Tango. All right, it's time to get hot and spicy and talk about salsa music. Now, defining salsa is a challenge, and it's somewhat controversial. In essence, salsa music is a blanket term that refers to various dance musics that combined elements of Cuban, Puerto Rican, and American influences. In the 1960s, a thriving scene for salsa styles was developed by immigrated and touring Latin artists. The hybrid style was then further popularized when the musicians from the New York scene returned back to the Caribbean and Latin America to showcase this form of music. So salsa music is very rhythmic and characteristics include a bell pattern or what's known as a clave pattern, which is the underlying rhythmic groove. Often layered on top of that are Afro-Cuban rhythms that have roots in Central and West African music. The pianist then also provides a counter rhythm known as Montunos. The bass player plays ostinato or repeated bass lines around the clave pattern. And on top of it all, there are Spanish sung lyrics that are often about love, romance, and Latin culture. Instrumentation includes vocalists, pianist, guitar or the Cuban tres, which is like a guitar, brass instruments like the trumpet or trombone, saxophones, double bass, and of course a lot of percussion. Auxiliary percussion instruments that are associated with salsa music include congas and bongos, timbales, claves, cowbells, maracas, and the giro. Tito Puente is one of the most beloved Puerto Rican American musicians. The songwriter, bandleader, and percussionist was born in Harlem. He first began performing with his sister Anna as a dancer, but an injury put an end to that dream. By the age of 13, he was working professionally as a musician and eventually as an apprentice for the historic Machito Orchestra. After serving three years in the Navy in World War II, he studied music at Juilliard. In 1947, he formed his own 10-piece band that would later grow with the addition of even more musicians. His group performed regularly at the Palladium in New York City, which became the center for the Mambo craze. Mambo is a style of salsa music. In the 1950s, he began presenting mambos, songs, and cha-chas to mainstream audiences, and his music and dynamic stage performances made him an international star. Throughout his career, he recorded 120 albums and appeared in several films. Puente died in 2000. Throughout his life, he received five Grammy Awards, along with a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2003.
One of Tito Puente's most famous songs is Oye Como Va, which translates to Listen How It Goes. It was released on Puente's album El Rey Bravo in 1962, and the song achieved worldwide popularity in 1970 when it was recorded by the Mexican-American supergroup Santana for their classic album Abraxas. The piano instantly establishes a clave pattern, and the flute takes the main melody against the tight, rhythmic layerings before the horns are featured. The flute later improvises against the layered, written horn lines. Now following a false ending, the music picks back up again. Simply put, the song is a classic that showcases tight arrangement characteristics and infectious rhythms. Oye como va. Listen how it goes. Celia Cruz is a Cuban-born singer whose popularity earned her the nickname the Queen of Salsa. She began her career in Cuba and then Mexico before settling in America. She first came to notoriety as the lead singer with Sonora Matancerra. Following the Cuban Revolution of 1960, she began working with Tito Puente. Cruz recorded 37 studio albums and earned two Grammy Awards and three Latin Grammy Awards throughout her life. La Vida es un Carnaval or Life is a Carnival, is one of Celia Cruz's most famous songs. It was written by Victor Daniel and released as the lead single from Cruz's studio album, Mi Vidar Es Cantar, from 1998. It has become one of Cruz's signature songs, and it has been covered by several artists. Rolling Stone lists La Vida Es Un Carnaval at number 439 on their list of 500 greatest songs of all time. The tune has a great groove and is tightly arranged and orchestrated. The lyrics offer a positive message. Here they are. Anyone who thinks that life is unequal, you have to know that it is not so. That life is a beauty, you have to live it. Anyone who thinks they are alone and wrong, you have to know that it is not so. That in life, there is no one alone. There is always someone. There's no need to cry, no need to cry, that life is a carnival. And it's more beautiful to live singing. There's no need to cry, no need to cry, that life is a carnival and the sorrows are singing. There's no need to cry, that life is a carnival and it is more beautiful to live singing. There's no need to cry, no need to cry, that life is a carnival. One of my favorite traditional Latin artists is Cachao. Cachao is Israel Lopez. That's his real name. Born in 1918, Cachao is a classically trained Cuban-born bassist and composer who is considered the co-creator of Mambo, along with his older brother, multi-instrumentalist Orestes Lopez. They were born into a musical family in Havana, And in fact, Cachao had 35 family members who were bassists. In 1962, he immigrated to Spain to avoid Castro's communistic regime and moved to New York in 1963, where he worked as a session player. In the 1970s, Cachao moved to Las Vegas and then Miami, but was widely forgotten until actor Andy Garcia released a documentary in 1989 on the Mambo Master. Afterwards, his popularity grew, and he began recording several albums as a leader. Cachao died in 2008 at the age of 89 and received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2003. Mambo is a song credited to Cachao, and it's also the name of my dog. That's true. Cachao is credited as being one of the key creators of Mambo, as I mentioned, along with his brother. And here he showcases the most characteristic 
elements of the form. Take notice of the heavy focus on percussion, the gang vocals, and the specific rhythmic patterns associated with the mambo style. Also listen for flautist Antonio Arcano, who improvises over the layered rhythmic grooves. The song was written in 1938 and recorded in 1951. Mambo. The final group that I will be discussing in today's episode is the Buena Vista Social Club. The Buena Vista Social Club is a group of Cuban musicians that came together in 1996 to establish an all-star band. Produced by American guitarist Ry Cooter, the group recorded their self-titled album, followed by a tour. German director Wim Wenders captured their performances and conducted interviews with the members, leading to an award-winning documentary called Buena Vista Social Club. The popularity of the doc led to further interest in Cuban music and Latin music in general. The group is named after the members-only club that was once centered in Havana, Cuba. The Buena Vista Social Club. Chan Chan is a son combano composition that was recorded in 1985 by Compe Sangunda. In 1996, Compe Sangunda Eliadas Ochoa and other veteran Cuban musicians recorded their version as part of the Buena Vista Social Club project. Lyrically, the song is set on a beach and revolves around two central characters, Juanica and Chan Chan. The song relates the story of a man, Chan Chan, and the woman, Juanica. They are building a house and they go to the beach to get some sand. Chan Chan collects the sand. Juanica shakes it. And in doing so, she shakes herself, making Chan Chan embarrassed. The track serves as the opening number on the Buena Vista Social Club album, their self-titled release. Check it out. Great track. Chan Chan. All right, my friends, so there you have it. There is at least an introduction to the music of Latin America. We talked about tangos and sambas and mambos and such, but really just scratched the surface. So you would have to do a deeper dive to really get a full understanding of the music of Latin America. But I learned a lot in presenting this one, and I hope you did as well. To learn more about the program, you can go to 30 albums for 30 yearscom You can also check out my book, A History of American Music, 1750 through 1950, an origin story that's available through Kendall Hunt Publishing. I hope you join me again. Together, let's keep this music alive and have a wonderful day.